Hello. I am under my stove, which is where my hot water heater is, and my water pump. Uh, the water pump here has a pressure switch that is failing. All right, so this is my pump, and this is the pressure switch, which has failed. Um, it's got this little set screw on it, which is used to adjust the pressure uh, when it turns on and off. And I have loosened it up as much as I possibly can, and it's still having problems. Uh, mostly, it, it continues to run even after it's reached the pressure threshold and starts putting way too much pressure in the line, which is bad for appliances like the hot water heater. So... I'm going to bypass it. Um, this really just senses how much pressure is in the water system. Uh, so I got this one instead. This is a square D pressure sensor. This is what the cover looks like. It functions the same way. Water pressure is sensed through this line. I also got a little pressure gauge. Uh, and when it gets up to 60 PSI, it opens the circuit like that. And when it's back down to below 40 PSI, it closes the circuit. Same function as this, this little guy, which only runs on the hot wire. So I only really need to run wire on one side. Um, this is supposed to be an AC component, um, but we're going to see if we can get away with using it for my low voltage solution. It's just a mechanical switch, so I hope it'll be okay. I know that at least one other person's done it, but they didn't explain how, so I'm here to fill in that gap. Let's take a closer look at this switch. So ideally, uh, you would have hot wire and neutral wire coming in, connecting to the outer terminals, and then you have grounds that are here on the housing. And then uh, Going out to your pump, you would have these two wires, the hot and the neutral. And when the pressure reaches a certain point, it disconnects. So the pressure will then go down and once it reaches a certain uh, minimal pressure, it will reconnect and it bridges between this terminal and this terminal. Since I only need to do it for one side, for the hot, I'm only just going to use these two terminals. So my hot will be coming in and going out uh, so it, it comes off of the the service line and then goes through the switch and then out to the pump uh, the neutral is just a straight line straight through it so it'll still just complete the circuit just with one using one side and then I have my pressure gauge which has PSI uh, I can view the PSI which will help me dial in um, what pressure I want. This is by default supposed to be 60 PSI turn off and 40 PSI turn on to keep the pressure between 40 and 60 PSI at all times. Um, I can adjust that pressure using this knot, uh, this nut, and then I can adjust the range using this nut. Um, but I just want to be able to take a glance and know what my pressure is and see what's good. This will give me a little bit more of an indicator of what's going on. So that's the whole assembly. And when it comes to water flow, you don't really need that much. Like it's only sensing the pressure. You don't need to have a lot of flow coming through here, which is why this is actually just going to be a dead end. Um, so it'll pressurize with the line, but nothing is actually flowing through the system. Okay, so here's what I'm working with. I modified it a little bit to have more brass on brass connections. Uh, Shorten this brass a little bit, uh, this little run here, so it should be a little bit more compact. And now it's ready for uh, PEX connection right here. And then we'll just have to tee into the existing line like that. Uh, the whole assembly will then attach with this uh, through the 2x4 to the, uh, the inner wall inside of the uh, cabinet. And it should mount just like that underneath everything. So After that, all I got to do is wire it in and uh, turn it on. We'll see what happens. 
I have pre-wired the pressure switch just on one side so that uh, it connects and disconnects these two wires depending on the pressure. So I've run some wire out of here so I can basically cap this up now and it'll be a lot easier to install. Okay, so we've got the, the new pressure switch attachment all put together. So all I have to do is cut the line and attach it in here, mount it inside the wall and wire it up. Okay, so I know I've got, I'm not like a super plumber and I've got kind of a mess of pipe under here, but this is what I'm thinking. So this will be attached right here. And then we've got a little bit of PEX that taps into the service line. This other line over here in the back is for a city water bypass, but I think that this will be a perfectly fine line to monitor the pressure off of. So I've cut this plumbing before and I remember what it was like. Uh, even though all the pressure's off and the, the pump's off and um, I think I got the water pressure out of the line, I know that when I cut this, there's like a pretty good chance that water is going to be coming out of there. So I have the bucket underneath and I have a towel, which is essential for catching the water. So wish me luck. Knew it. We'll turn the pump on for a second and see if there are any leaks first. Doesn't look like it. And we can see that our pressure gauge is actually working. So that's cool. We're going to attach these two wires down here to these two wires so that the power going, the, the switch will no longer be this one, but it will be this one. And then we'll see what happens. I'm very curious. Whew. Here we go. All right, so I pulled these wires out, which are just attached with uh, spade connectors. Um, and as you can see, I put a bunch of uh, electrical tape around them in an effort to try to keep them in, because I also had problems with the electrical connection on this piece of crap um, pressure switch. So I'm just going to snip these guys off and use butt connectors to these new wires and uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I've wired it together. It's not totally cleaned up. Looks like I have a leak that I got to deal with, um, but it's just about ready to be turned on to see if we, uh, if we succeeded. Okay, so I uh, think I fixed the leak. Uh, these two bits were not quite tight enough, so I tightened them together. Um, PSI is at zero because I let the pressure out, so now I'm going to turn it on. But when I turn it on, I'll be turning on the new pressure switch. So let's hope we don't explode. Here we go. It shut off. Wow. 
what are we at? We're at just over 50 PSI. Looks like just about 55 PSI. Um, let's turn on the water. That's great. It works. Imagine that. All right, I'm gonna clean up these wires and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, shrink the heat shrink and I'm gonna call that a day. So that's the old pressure switch that I am bypassing with the new one and there's a pressure gauge. It works!